Hello everyone, my name is Mirna and on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, we want to welcome you to Mindalia live streaming, where thousands of people around the world gather to see the lectures and interviews organized by Mindalia TV. Today with us, Angel Rebo, CEO consultant, TV host, international public speaker, and president of the Wisdom for Kids Foundation is going to be interviewing Jonathan Mitchell. Jonathan has been a life and emotional coach for over 20 years, working with thousands of people in groups and one-on-one -on -one sessions. He loves assisting people finding and shifting self-destructive patterns using music to inspire and uplift people. Before starting with them, we want to remind you that Mindalia TV is a nonprofit organization our only mission is to share the information that can help raise the level of consciousness around the world, and you can help us. How? Subscribing to our channel if you haven't done it yet, leaving us a positive comment down below, or sharing this video with someone that you know that is going to benefit from the content that we're gonna be discussing here today. Also, while we are live streaming, like right now, you can interact with us through the chat. It's that screen that you're gonna see on my right-hand side. Through there, you can enter your question. We just ask you to please follow the format, the word question in caps, and the actual question you want answered at the end of the interview, they're going to be kindly answering. Last but not least, we invite you to go to Mindalia Televisao in Portuguese, Mindalia Televisión in Spanish, and Mindalia TV English, as you already know, so you can find out what is the content that we're developing there. We live stream five days a week. We can also share your own content, your valuable content through our platforms. You just have to go to our website. You will find the link on the top of the page. That link is going to take you to a form that you can fill out and our technical team will be contacting you. We want to see you there and we want you to see yourself in our screens as well. Without further delay, I'm not going to entertain you anymore. I'm going to be leaving you with Angel and with Johnny. Guys, welcome to Mindalia live streaming. The screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mirna and Jonathan. It's a pleasure to have you here at Mindalia TV tonight. Thank you for being here. Of course, my brother from the mother. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. I know we're going to have fun today, yeah. but as you were being in introduced, uh, you know, I was listening and, and it's so true. Isn't it the paradox that people have those self-destructive thoughts and, and, and behaviors? Why does that happen according to your experience, uh, Jonathan? Why people have patterns? Oh my goodness gracious. So first off, I just want to say again, thank you so much for having me on Majali TV. So excited and I have much respect for you. I mean, I can't tell you how much I respect you and love what you're doing. So thank you for having me on board. Thank you, thank you so much. Patterns. Um, it's a very good question. So I, I have theories behind that. Um, I think there's, it all comes down to, I read an interesting book called uh, Psycho-Cybernetics. It's an old 60s book. Um, but the whole premise was this guy, he used to be a, a uh, what's it called, a plastic surgeon. And he helped people look better. And he found out, he's like, people are trying to make themselves feel better on the outside for how they feel in the inside. And so when I read that book and he talked about one of the core uh, human belief systems that plagues all of us is I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough or I'm not enough of whatever it is. Um, it, it's kind of funny that we as humans are almost engineered as kids to take things in a negative way. <laughs> and like we, we, we have, I don't know why this is with humans, but it seems like as kids, we take what is out there and we take it as something wrong with us, even though it has nothing to do with us. You know what I mean? And it's not just all negative. Like we take good stuff too, like what, what are good parents do and patterning after them. But a lot of times it comes from our own experience, from our environment, from our own genetics. And there's tons of things with that. But, um, ultimately it comes down to like your own core. I, I always take it as like your, I don't want to say lesson. It's not the right word to say your mission or your purpose is partly to like Aristotle said to know thyself. Um, and so I think we're given, we are gifted with these belief systems. Like I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough or something like that. So we can learn how to overcome them and to really free ourselves because without that, um, tr I don't want to say trial, challenge, or the thing holding us back, um, we don't really get to see really how powerful and strong we are without having some sort of resistance. If it was easy, I mean, there's, there's no growth in the easiness. You know what I mean? There's growth in having to push yourself and grow outside of that. So I think part of the reason why in the divine world is we're gifted with these things to help us overcome them and get better and past it. And every single thing that happens around us from money to relationships to business to health, everything points to your pattern, right? It all screams out, this is your problem. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> 
And as soon as we start listening and, and healing and having that conversation, then our whole world starts to shift. And that's why I love working with people is just finding out what those patterns are, what's the core belief systems, what's the, what's the thing they keep experiencing over and over their pattern that they're frustrated with and want to move on. Because ultimately, you know, experiencing the same thing over and over again is so frustrating. So you're like, let me move on from this, please. <laughs> so yeah. And, and according to your experience, what makes the people make the first move, like to contact someone like you to be helped? I think it's just getting tired of it. You get to a point where you're kind of like, I'm just so tired of life not wanting, not life not being what I want it to be. You know, like there's more out there. I want to get more. So they want to have more of whatever. Most of the time it comes from like, I, have, I work with a lot of people who have um, overweight issues or like health or not health, but relationships. So they have a struggle in their marriage or they can't, they can't find their, you know, their one they want to be with. Usually it's something that you just kind of get tired and sick of it. They're like, okay, I've had enough. I've got to do something different. Um, and usually when they come to me is after they've been to a counselor or, or they've been to a health coach or they've been to someone and they haven't had results and they're just trying to find some sort of solution. So that's usually how people find me. And actually, I don't usually advertise. <laughs> Most of the people who find me are from word of mouth. Like at one time I was working with 100 people. They were all from referrals from someone else. So this kind of depends on where people are. I, to be fair... I put it out there a long time ago to the divine because I, and what I do with energy work and energy healing is more guided by divine than anything else. Like I'm not the source of healing. I'm a facilitator of healing. I am not the source. And so I told you know, my higher power a long time ago, if you want people to work with me, you bring them to me. Cause I'm not, I'm not gonna, I don't, I didn't feel right about actively going out there. And as I did that, let people come to me, then the right people who needed the help that I could give came. So and how can you use this energy, this like divine universal energy to, to help people? How can that be done? Oh, this is one of my favorite subjects. I have a whole class on this actually. So I used to teach a, um, a class in person for a year actually, where every week we had different subjects and this is one class just having this. It's awesome. So I personally believe that there, whatever you want to call it, I call it God. Um, there's a divine source of power out there. Like it's, I love the AA principle. So let me let me back up a second and tell you a little bit about myself to make sure you understand where I'm coming from. So when I was a teenager, I experienced a lot of death in my family, like suicide and drug overdose and all this other stuff. And so I kind of went atheistic in my views. And then I kind of came back around to where God very lovingly, politely slapped me across the face and said, hey, I'm here. So <laughs> ever since then, I, I became, I wanted to know how to funnel or to have the energy use it towards better goods, better, better things. And so um, as I learned that, I just learned, okay, number one, when I first went through energy work, after my whole learning where God was, a lot of um, therapies focus on saying that the healing comes from the healer, from the person. And there's, there's different aspects. We can get into different philosophies because I'm like Buddhists, for instance, say that, you know, God's in here, uh, that we are part of God, which I totally believe that. But at the same time, I also believe what AA teaches, saying that there's a power greater than me out there, right? And that power is what I want to tap into um, because I only have so much. So I used to do energy work where I'd be the one tuning into someone and I'd be the one moving the energy. And after three or four hours of doing that, I would be exhausted because it's all my energy trying to heal people, which we can totally do that. Humans are amazing. We're amazing you know, species. But after I started to go, wait a second, this doesn't, this is not in alignment with what I believe. I don't believe that I'm a healer. I know I can, but it's not me. Uh, as I started to step away and let higher power flow through me, then I found a lot more results, both personally and with other people, is because I just got out of the way and a lot more things could happen faster. So if someone, um, to go back to your original question, I'm so sorry to avoid that. Uh, how can someone do that? To me, it's about intuition. It's recognizing what inspiration is. Um, there's an amazing book called, um, oh, what's it called? It's one of my favorite books, and I can't remember the name. I'll think about it in a second. Anyways, it's about creativity. I'll, it'll come to me in a second. Let me get it. It'll be right here next to me. Um, and it's about how to tune into your inspiration. So the author, as soon as I think of the name, I'll, I'll tell her because she's going to be. You can take it if you want. I, mean, I, we, I need to find it. Our, our, our interviews are extremely accommodating for I'm gonna find ev it. Right everybody. Art, so. The art of, okay, hang on a second, art of 
Okay, I'm going to find it. Give me one second, I'll find it. Anyways, as I'm looking this up, I'm going to tell you what this is. <laughs> <laughs> no, if it's uh, important, it's a point you want to make. Yeah, absolutely. We can help people with that book. Definitely, that's something. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna find it here. No, <laughs> thank you, absolutely. That because it's an amazing book. It's one of my favorite ones. So as I'm saying about this, so there's a this book is about this woman who is trying to teach painters how to get inspiration of how to get paint, you know, of how what to paint, to create. Um, and she found that she found this process of how to tune into um, inspiration of how to get paint, and so she realized it's not just painters who need this help; it's creators in general. And so she expanded out to musicians and to all these other people have had a tune inspiration um and then she tuned into business saying you know we as humans are just a creative species right we're just we're meant to be creators and so she has this book about this process and two of the things as soon as i find out what this dang book's name is because i'm going to feel so silly when i didn't remember it um it's okay two of the things that um she suggests is one first thing is keeping a daily journal where all you do is first thing in the morning, you wake up and you write whatever comes to mind, no matter how monotonous or boring it is. You get up and say, why am I up at 6 a.m.? I'm so bored. What am I doing? <laughs> all this, like the stuff, like the first two or three pages, this first, she says three pages. Usually the first two pages is just you complaining about being up so early. And then the last page is when you get to the meat of just saying, you know, what am I really doing here? What am I trying to tune into? And, and you have these thoughts that come in it's it's basically just dumping information out like it could be that some days you have a bad day and you just in your journal it's just your dumping journal you say you know today was a crappy day because of blah 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 or it could be you wake up with this uh, amazing amount of gratitude because you see the sun you're like today i'm just feeling this overwhelming amount of gratitude and i just want to talk about it you know the the point is you have this journal where you don't filter yourself at all you just write whatever comes to mind and it's a dumping exercise her whole point was as creators, because we don't allow ourselves most of the time as humans to uh, clean the plate, we have so much stuff coming at us. We have family stuff and work and trying to work out and food and all this information about politics and world chaos and all sorts of stuff. We never give ourselves uh, a space to be creative. So through the week, she says every single morning for seven days, you're writing that and just dump, 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 dump for a week. On the seventh day, you give yourself one hour where you choose your creativity activity. So for her as a painter, it was painting. For me as a musician, I sit down on my computer and I start writing music. If it's um, like I have a buddy who works with wood and he just starts modeling some sort of wood. It doesn't matter what it is. It's whatever creative thing you have. And you literally let yourself just, since you've dumped out everything, you've created space in your mind and your spirit, you sit there and your intention is, is to allow higher power to flow through you, right? And to give it space for you to have inspiration. So for me, it was, um, as far as going back to the original question again, of how to have inspiration flow through, you have to empty yourself of things that are there in the first place, because if you're so full of worry, frustration, anger, stress, um, even good stuff can be overwhelming in your mind to where you can't get inspiration. Uh, you have to be able to create some space in your mind to receive that inspiration to move forward. Does that make sense? And again, I think one of the keys that we have as a society is that we're so focused on being working so much that uh, we never give ourselves a chance to relax and chill out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so this is kind of like taking meditation and putting on steroids, dumping it out, giving yourself time and space to receive in the first place. For me as an energy healer, when I do a session with someone, my whole goal is to get to the point where I'm not following what I think. I'm trying to open up the heavens, so to speak, and really allow higher power to teach me and show me what this person needs. Mostly every time I do a session, I just erase everything I ever thought I knew about energy healing and say, what does this person need? Because I believe the higher power has every single answer. I consciously do not, but I know that my soul has access to the um, dictionary of the, of the universe, right? And so if I let myself tap into that, I can have answers for everything. So if someone comes to me with a question about how they were raped 10 years ago and they don't know how to get over it, I have no idea how to get over that either. I have no clue. <laughs> but I know and I believe and I trust that, that heaven does. And so if I open myself up to that, then I know how to process it in a way that's healthy, that keeps them safe, that makes it so they can process through uh, successfully. 
Um, and the more you're able to do that, I think not just with obviously energy healing, but with business, when you go into a problem or a relationships or money or anything, you say, okay, I don't know what to do here, but I trust that there is an answer somewhere and allow yourself that privilege to get access to it. That's when you can start to have some really cool things happen. So, um, I have another thing too. Can I go on another subject? Is that okay? Of course. I can Absolutely. go on forever. I can talk Absolutely. forever. Absolutely. No, no, please, please. I, I actually, my follow-up question was going to be related to how the people, how you, so what has to be like the attitude of someone receiving your healing, but please, we're going to cover that afterwards. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's, there's one more thought for someone who's more left brained. Um, if you ever read the book, uh, laws of creation by Napoleon Hill, it was his precursor to, um, think and grow rich. So think and grow rich is a very, I don't want to, it's a high school version, but the laws of creation is like this college version of what he taught, which is awesome. And one of the things he talks about was that there's this in physics, there's this energy where he talks about every idea that has existed is existing or will exist is already in existence in the ethos, right? And so we have access to it by just opening our minds up by receiving the inspiration. And one of the ways he suggested to do it was by meeting with someone like a coach or even with a friend or a mastermind, quote unquote, and to be able to receive that. But there's lots of ways around it. But anyways, I had that thought. I was like, I gotta talk about that. So continue, I'm ready for your question. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, by the way, before, before I continue, um, the microphone for some reason is touching something all the time. So as, oh, yeah. as you move, I think it's if you could put it inside your shirt as opposed to outside, I think it's gonna help us. Hang on a second, I'll do yeah, that. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. Hang on a second. Okay. So sorry, Angel. No, 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 that's okay. No, no, no. I, I want you to, you know, what you in the flow? I was just listening to this sound that we don't want to have that. Okay, is this any better? There we go. No, it's, it's, no, because it's touching the, the chair. Okay, hang on a second. I might have to hold so it. Again. No, no, just put it, put it outside. No, 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 don't hold it. Don't hold it. Put it outside and yeah, let's let's see. Let's we'll see if this works. I'm just undressing for everyone. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> like floating. Put it, put it like floating so it doesn't it doesn't touch the. the, the okay, the, I'm the gonna leave a little bit. There we okay, go. Okay, good. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, my question was, so um, when you were teaching this, so you said. 100 people um so what's the right attitude for someone receiving your energy healing what's the right attitude what we as 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 uh, you know someone receiving uh you know uh, the, that universal energy what should be our 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 attitude i heard a quote once that said that meekness is power with control and humility is knowing where the power comes from so I think it's having a very realistic um, and healthy idea about where your role is that we are meant to receive. And sometimes sometimes in the process, people aren't able to receive because they have worthiness issues or they have, like for instance, a woman had issues with male and so she had a hard time receiving from a male entity and so we had to shift it to a feminine energy. There's a lot of reasons around behind it. So if, you, if there's any time that you feel like you're not getting something, there's obviously something in here that you're not able to um, get out of the way. Does that make sense? So the first thing I would say is identifying, okay, so let's just say if we're in a class together, right? And let's just say 50 people are like, okay, I'm in, I'm tuned in, I'm good. I just leave them alone and be like, okay, these 50 people, what is going on? And they say, um, I'm not getting anything. Okay, how can we not get anything? Um, you know, I, I just don't feel anything. I don't, I don't get anything. I'm just upset. I'm frustrated. I'm stressed, whatever the case is, okay? I'll just tell them when you think about receiving inspiration, what comes to mind? And usually in that case, it's some sort of negative, like I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. Um, I think this is a bunch of hooey, whatever the word is. And so I just tell them, let's just play a game because usually I don't have time to process whatever that fear is. But I say, let's just play a game where just for the next hour, you just play with me. Just, just have fun. Just for this hour, at the end of this hour, you can pick up all your anger and stress and all your stuff in the hour. But for, for this hour, just come play with me for a second. And let's just try this. I think when people give themselves permission, a big, big thing that I talk about is permission. If someone gives themselves permission to just let go for an hour of their stress, of their 
um, criticism around the process, around whatever it is that's holding him back, and you say, just for this hour, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna try this. Being open in this, that little amount is enough to let inspiration come in, and to be able to fill them up with whatever light and knowledge they need to have. So, you briefly talked about music before. Um, is is uh, is music uh, healing? You said, is music healing? Yes, that's a good absolutely. It is. You know what's crazy about music is it's one of the few things that combines both hemispheres of the brain. So like you have the logical math side and you have the crazy, awesome creative side and it meshes together. Like music is one of the most amazing things that does that, you know? Um, I mean, there's a lot of creative creative uh, um, outlets like painting, for instance, does that a little bit too. But music is just one of those few things that has the ability to open up our minds. And not only that, I did this interesting study where um, they talked about the frequency of music and how some specific keys of music heal more and open up our souls more than others. Um, there's some there's some topics out there that some people say that only classical music does certain things for the brain and the mind and all that stuff. I personally think I've, I've received goosebumps for a lot of rock songs <laughs> that most people would say that's not inspired. But for me, I'm like, oh, this opens my soul. This is like this is exactly what I need. Um, so I know there's some specific keys, which if someone's not a musician, you probably have no idea what the heck I'm talking about with keys. Um, so there's different keys that a song is written in that changes the level of where the person's singing or the instruments they're playing, that kind of stuff. For me, the biggest thing that changes with music is the intention that the song was written for in the first place. That makes sense. Um, and it's not only that, but it's where the person is when they're receiving it. So... For, I'll give you an example that most people don't think of. It's one of my favorite songs. It's called Shine by Collective Soul, released back in the 90s. The lyrics are basically a prayer. Um, so the words are, uh, give me a word, give me a sign, show me where to look, but tell me what will I find. Um, love is in the water, love is in the air, show me where to look, but tell me will love be there. And then the chorus is, um, heaven let your light shine down. That's what the chorus is. But it's this hard rock song, right? So it's like this people don't um they don't usually hear that because they hear the heavy the guitars and that kind of stuff but the song itself the intention is this prayer saying please you know give me inspiration so every time every time i hear or play or sing that song like it tunes me right in saying this is what i want i love that song so but the other side of it music can also be destructive so i think there's a lot of music out there regardless of genre that can be um hurtful to our souls just as much as Music can be helpful. Like one thing that Hitler said actually was that if you want to control the youth of a nation, you control the music. So it's just interesting to listen to pop music and say, okay, what's the messages being given and who's trying to do what to our youth? You know, it's just interesting. So that's a great point. Is there a way to differentiate between those two types of music? Between uh, supportive, healing, yes. and then destructive? Yes. Um, <clears throat> the biggest thing is the words. Um, that's the easiest way you know. Like if someone's talking about how they're going to mess someone up and all, like not all rap songs do this, but for instance, a lot of rap songs talk about all these negative things and people love it because the beat's good or because the rhythm's good, that kind of stuff. But the message, the energy is like this, ugh, you know what I mean? It's just not there. On the other hand, there's other rap songs that are amazing and they have, they're totally right in line. Because I think, again, the intention was what they're writing about is about whatever the healthy subject there is they're doing. You know, um, the other part of it is um, the sound itself. Like it's, again, without getting too technical about music, with, with about keys and tempos and the instruments being used and all this stuff, um, <clears throat> you can kind of tell a negative song as opposed to a positive one. Um, and I'm not talking about like, we're not talking about, um, what's a good example? like these Coca-Cola ads was like, no, 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 no. It's just not like that kind of stuff. It's also like, um, like with Shine of Collective Soul, what's the intention? What's the feeling around it? Is it clear? Um, or is it this negative kind of eerie? As a good example, a negative destructive song would be like on a horror movie. <laughs> they're just, they're meant to have you go, oh, it's just like, like this weird feeling, you know? So, if anyone wants to have an experiment, watch a scary movie without sound. Most of the time, you won't be as scared because there's no of that emotional buildup or that that grinding of the like, ah, like this weird feeling. Or you watch the movie called um, Interstellar with uh, Matthew McConaughey, 
the music on there is phenomenal. It makes that show like so much more powerful because of that music. So it, it's just a, a testament to see how powerful music is when you add it into something like a movie and you see what your emotional response is because of it, you know? So does that help? Oh, absolutely. How did yeah. you end up being a musician? So, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I grew up with four sisters. I'm in the middle of four girls. And uh, my parents were very adamant that we didn't do just sports, that we did music as well. And so um, when I, it was my turn to pick an instrument, I told my mom I wanted to play drums. And she told me it was too loud. So I had to pick something else. And so I picked the trumpet, um, which, again, was loud. And I feel so bad for my mom having to put up with me in the trumpet years. Because if you ever heard a beginning trumpet player, it's kind of like a beginning clarinet player. It is the worst sound you've ever heard in your life. But, um, but I would learn. They're very patient. So I played classical and jazz trumpet all the way through high school. And then... Um, and then in my early 20s, I should say about high school, I started to figure out, like my sisters kind of told me this when I was younger. Like when I, because I was the only boy, <laughs> I didn't want to have anything to do with anything that was feminine because I was like, I'm the man, I'm going to be the man. And I thought that singing was girly until my both my sisters and my dad pointed out, because my dad's like, well, you love ACDC, right? I'm like, of course I do. I was like, well, that's a guy. You like Boston, right? Okay, that's ACDC. Uh, I know, that's that's a guy singer. And then my sisters were finally like, you know, girls like it when guys sing. And so uh, ever since my mid-20s, I started doing music. And, and then I found it as an outlet of myself to just, as I was beginning my whole emotional healing journey, I found music as an outlet to write to people what I felt and felt and thought and to debrief myself on issues or problems I had or that kind of stuff. And so that's most of my music that people can listen to has some sort of message to a specific person or to a specific group, because that's how I process lyrics for, for me, so. And how do you keep up with your creativity? You know, so, every creator, I'm sure you know this from being a creator, it goes through ebbs and flows. Like sometimes you get like on this wall, um, but for the most part, I, I don't try to stop it. So if I'm driving somewhere and I get some random idea, I'll whip out my phone and I'll sing it. So sometimes I'll be, like I'm doing my MBA class right now, right? And so in the middle of my class, I had to step outside. And I was like, da, 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 and I go back inside and go back in because I knew if I didn't record it, I'd lose it. I'd forget it. So one of the guys was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I had to record a song. <laughs> I think for me, it's being able to write down inspiration as it comes because it will come in the randomest times. And the more you do that, the more it will come because it's like a muscle that you're flexing. So when you recognize it, you go, even if it's stupid and silly, like there's a lot of times where I listen to a lyric or a melody that I've sang like three days later. And in the moment when I recorded it, I think that's the most amazing song ever. And then three days later, I'm like, that is the worst song I've ever thought of. But it's just about having no judgment, just allowing yourself the permission to be messy and to not have it be perfect and say, whether it's a painting, woodwork, business, music, whatever it is, and saying, I'm going to allow myself the privilege and permission to just come up with ideas and have no criticism against it. It's just, we're just going to try this again, right? And the more you're willing to give yourself permission to just write down or to sing or to paint or do something without criticism, the creativity comes because that's our, that's our child of ourselves. That's our little kid who wants to come out and play. Kids don't want to be criticized. They want us to just tell you how awesome their creation was, no matter how dumb it was, right? Um, the more you can feed that little kid self of you, is the more joy you get out of it and the more inspiration comes because you're creating that space for it. So, and you, did you, if I, if I understand, if I understood it well, did you, did you have your own band? Did you play in a band? I do still play in a band actually. Yes. You still do. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. I, I love it. I love playing in a band. Um, I actually right now write a lot of music for placements. So I had a lot of music on Fox sports on uh, some commercials. I had music in Mexico and Canada for in their malls, that kind of stuff. So that's usually where a lot of my writing goes to is for commercials or TV or something like that um, because I enjoy that and it's a good, it's a financial means, but it's something I like. Um, but in person, like I have a band here. We just played at Country Fan Fest. We did a radio competition. Like we just go and play and have fun. Um, it's it's kind of like when you hear people about being Again, I haven't been in the military, so I'm not trying to demean that at all. But it's like when you hear people being in the military having this bond with their brothers. 
Um, you hear about the same thing with sports. Like you have this bond with the people you play with. When you're in a band, there's this bond. Like there's this, this we have five people in our band. There's this sixth entity that co that combines us and makes us more than what I could be alone. It's the coolest thing because like we'll be playing live and something will go wrong. Like someone messes up because it happens. We're human, but everyone else adjusts to it and it ends up being better than it was as it was supposed to be. It's just awesome how it works. How people just have this thing. I don't know how to describe it. It's like this energy between it, you know? So it's just, mm, I love it. There seems to be a common denominator in your life, which is you're always surrounded by a lot of people, by a lot of people. Yeah. So how, how do you feel? What do you think is you like, what would you like to do? Uh, what, do what is that thing that makes you be the most comfortable with yourself? You mean confidence-wise? Yeah, or that you like to do the most? What do I like to do the most? Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, sometimes it's having ice cream. <laughs> um, you know, I've been, I've been at a point in my life, honestly, right now, I've been kind of re-looking at that, trying to rediscover what I like to do, just because for the first, I'm almost 40, and uh, for the first little while of my life, I thought I knew what it was, and I feel like it's shifting. And so I'm actually in a point where I'm asking the same question, just going, what do I like to do? And so right now, I'm literally trying to listen to my heart, my soul, to inspiration and say, where do I enjoy that serves someone else that I feel like is the highest and best thing for me to do? And I don't have an answer for that yet. So <laughs> I'm at a point I'm trying to figure that out. What I do know is that music is something that feeds my soul. And so whether that becomes something, if I ever become a huge fan and do whatever, it doesn't matter because I like the just the act of creation or even sometimes I'll be in my room and I play my acoustic guitar and there's no one else here and I just like it. I just like the sound of the guitar. Um, it's just something that is relieving for me. It helps me. Does that make sense? So um, I also love, like if I'm with people, I have to take notice of like, I think there's extremes you can go to. Like for instance, I can't be with people all the time. I've got to have some me time. Um, I think you can go out of whack either direction. You can be too much alone time or too much with people time. It's just trying to figure out that balance. And for me, it comes down to listening to myself. If I'm with people a lot, I'm like, oh, yes, this is good. It feels good. I like it. Um, then I follow that. If it gets to a point I'm like, okay, I've had enough, I back off and let myself have the time I need to recuperate and be alone if I need to be. So a lot of it for me as far as being comfortable with myself, like you said, is just listening to me and what I feel like is good or not. Um, I think a lot of people don't do that because most of the time it's because they're stressed or too busy, but it's because they don't know what their heart, their soul sounds like. <laughs> as weird as that is to say, a lot of people just don't know because they don't take the time to figure it out. So anyways. Is there a way to help them to figure that out? Is there something that you could suggest uh, them to do? Um, or have you ever helped anybody to do that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like it all comes down to how you feel. Like I know the cliche things, listen to the secret, but it's about listening to how you feel with stuff, right? So another topic I talk a lot about is boundaries. And this, this all comes in line with the same thing. Like what feels okay, what doesn't feel okay, and are you honoring both sides, right? Like say for a woman, if she's going into in a dating environment, what is okay for her? What is not okay for her? And has she identified that and does she stay true to it? So for instance, I taught this girl once or I had a girl that was a client of mine that was having a hard time with dating. And I just said, okay, here's what I want you to do. Like I said, we figured out what she wanted. I said, I want you to pay attention to how you feel with a guy, right? If you get the creeper vibe, if you get disrespectful vibe, if you get any of that stuff, you cut them off because in the past, she would say, oh, he's okay. I'll give him another chance. And she ended up getting burned or she'd end up with a guy being a jerk or being creepy. And she wasn't listening to herself, right? And I said, from now on, the first thing you're doing is you're going to listen to how you feel, right? And let that be your guide instead of, you know, the other things she was doing. Because I said, it's pointing out saying what you're doing is not working, right? So as she went out with people, I said, I want you to pay attention to these, these things, right? What do you want in a guy? Someone who was um kind who was funny who was respectful of her who paid attention to her needs like little things and we created these little um boundaries around those things like for instance taking care of her 
for her, she grew up with a dad that took care of her mom, like opened the door and that kind of stuff. And so that was a big deal to her. And so she wanted someone who did that without her having to ask. It was just part of this genetic makeup. And so when she went out with a guy and he didn't do that, first thing she's like, ding, this is something I got to pay attention to. In the past, you'd be like, oh, it's okay. He's fine. And she'd just kind of shirk it off. I was like, no, you pay attention to how you feel. So that was one thing. Uh, second thing was like how laid back a guy was or not. So just paying attention to, is he getting, is he freaking out at a waiter or not? Is he, um, is he able to go with the flow of things? Like, how do you know if someone else is laid back or not? And then create boundaries around that. And so as she did that, she started paying attention to how she felt with someone. She started weeding other people out because before she'd let people into her circle that she would just say, oh, we'll figure it out later. But now she's like saying, okay, first thing, as soon as I feel this, I'm done, moving on, right? Um, so that's, that's an example of, of a, I don't want to say negative, but it's, 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 it's creating these, it's a boundary, right? So instead of having boundaries like this, she went down to this. And anybody who's outside these two lines, she didn't spend time with. And so it helped her focus. So now she only has these five guys, and she eventually found the guy she wanted to be with, and it fit exactly what she wanted because she was listening to how she felt in the moment, you know? So <clears throat> it's a big, it's a lot about how you feel. It really comes down to it. It's kind of like on, on the flip side, like for myself personally, um, I have a lot of opportunities come to me. Um, and, and I don't say that in a cocky way because I think a lot of people have a lot of opportunities, but there is such a thing as too many good things. Like for instance, if I have like a music career and an MBA and have my family and I have, I only have so much energy to give and so much time to give, right? I can't bring on everything. Um, I remember hearing um, someone talk about the power of saying no. <laughs> and so it's, it's finding what you need to focus on. And so I had to start paying attention saying, what is the most important thing for me to focus on, finding what that was. And as soon as anything came into my realm, if it supported those things, I would bring it on. If it didn't support that, it was gone. But I had to listen to myself and go, okay, does this feel okay or does it feel overwhelming? If it felt good and brought me joy and brought me life, yes. Even if it was a good thing, like like say for instance right now, if a record label came to me and said, we want to sign you on and have you tour all over the world, I'd be like, awesome. It sounds overwhelming. <laughs> it doesn't sound, it used to, 10 years ago, it would have been exactly what I was looking for. Right now, it does not sound that way anymore. Does that make sense? However, if someone came to me and said, we want you to write music for these five movies, I'd be like, I am all over that. It fits exactly what I'm looking for, you know? So it's just paying attention to how I feel, what I think. Does it bring me? Does it lift me? Does it bring me joy, positivity, or does it bring me down? Does it weigh me down? Is it overwhelming? Just paying attention to those things is a big way of how you need to pay attention to yourself. So, Excellent. Where can we find you? How can people reach out to you? What's the easiest way? Well, <clears throat> they can go to either unleashg.com. That's U-N-L-E-A-S-H-G.com. Or to... My music, which is Crew Tunes, K R E W T U N E S dot com. Um, either way is fine. I'm. I always. I have a contact box. In either one of them. I'm happy to talk to whoever wants to talk. Excellent. Thank you. So we're going to go through the questions now. Sure. Uh, first question: Any recommendation for Monday mornings? Monday mornings. Hmm. Monday mornings. I do believe in a power hour. So. You ever seen the, the show Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> I have not. I have personally. So, if anyone's seen that, one of the things that the, one of the brain surgeons does before a huge operation, they do the Superman pose. They get him in the moment. Um, I do believe in the power of a power hour. So most power hours mean you do something physically, mentally, emotionally, and, and spiritually. So like a 10-minute meditation, half-hour workout, uh, eat breakfast, take care of your body, and then something to kind of get you jazzed up that's the ideal world. If you can do something like that, like a power hour where you take care of your soul, your body, your mind in the first hour before you go to bed, or I'm, I'm sorry, go to work or wherever you're going. That is a huge thing. If you come to a point where you don't have time for that, just do a power stance. Like today I'm super woman person, something that shifts your energy and gives you momentum through the day. That's the first thing I would recommend is doing something that gives you some sort of momentum to carry through the day instead of waking up, being late for work and having to get to work and, it's just it's the wrong start you want to have. So, Excellent. Thank you. Next question. Do you believe music actually has healing powers in its vibrations as believed by Native Americans, for example? Yes, absolutely. 
The music itself has vibration. We are vibrational creatures, so absolutely music has uh, that healing power. Totally. Next question. How can an artist serve their community? You said artist? Yes, an artist serves their community. Excuse me. <laughs> Um, well, it would all obviously depend on which kind of art you're talking about, paints or music or whatever. Um, I always think that finding what charity organizations or causes around you locally are needing help. Um, for instance, I just did a, a uh, um, we have a huge Thanksgiving awareness, or not awareness, but um, homeless kids awareness push right now. And so I went and played myself personally, my music for this charity event where we're raising money to buy food for these kids for Thanksgiving. So it's partly just putting your words out there. I mean, everyone has Facebook or Twitter or something. Just put out there saying, what's going on right now? Who needs help? And then using your art as a part of that. Even if it's just a, something as simple, like if you're a painter, drawing a picture for a family that has nothing. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot to give what you have. You don't have to do this huge event. Do something that gives your art to someone else to improve their lives. That's all you need to do is just figure out who that is and then give it to them. Excellent. Next question. <clears throat> What do you think is the biggest rock in the shoe for people out there in the dating scene? Ooh, biggest rock in the shoe in the dating scene? Boundaries. 100% is boundaries. I think most people don't have an idea what their boundaries are, and they don't, they don't know how to communicate them. They don't know what they are, and they don't know how to hold strong to them. I think that's the biggest thing I hear constantly is boundaries, not knowing that what that is. And what is your number one advice? For boundaries? Yeah, for uh, dating, for the dating scene. For dating. Um, I think it's really paying attention to, for me, it was figuring out what I really, okay, a lot of people get into the dating scene and they jump in without figuring out who they are first. Um, so they jump from relationship to relationship to relationship and they don't figure out that they're carrying their same junk or patterns to each relationship. You got to give yourself the time and space to really figure yourself out. And I'm not talking years. I'm talking give yourself three to six months where all you do is figure out what you like, what you don't like, figure out what, what resides and resonates with you, what you're okay with, what you're not okay with. Um, and then start going out there to other people. I believe that talking about vibration, as you vibrate to a higher level, you will bring in a different level of people. Um, can I give an example? Do we have time for that? I don't want to take too much oh, we time. Oh, we have time. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example from another girl. I had a friend of mine up in Idaho Falls. So she was in this small town. The dating scene was horrible. There's no one to date. And she kept finding herself dating the same guys who either just wanted to make out or have something physical. And she was, by the way, she was a single mom of four kids, right? Hard worker, full time, had full custody of her kids. And she just could not find a guy that fit what she wanted. So she was frustrated. She came to me and she goes, I cannot find anybody. What I'm finding is these guys who want this, 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 or this. And I'm like, okay. You have to think of yourself like a radio station. You are tuning into this music. Like your music are these guys that you're finding, right? The radio does not create the music. The radio does not have little people in there doing the music. The radio, all it does is tune into the music that is already in existence. If you think about that for one thing, it's an amazing, powerful concept right there. The radio just tunes in to music that's already there. We as humans do the same thing. So she's on this frequency of 101.9 guys are not very good. And what she wanted to do was to tune in to this radio frequency of 103.3, my dream guy, right? So the only thing I had her do was the activity I just told you about where every morning she'd write her frustrations around dating. She'd just write, this was stupid, this was dumb, this was stupid. And then the rest of the day, I had her write, I had her look into the future a year out and said, what would it be like if I was kneeling next to my guy giving a prayer of Thanksgiving at Christmas. What would that feel like in that in that realm? And so I had to write down the exact prayer of what she would say once he was right next to her. And so in the morning, she would dump out all of her frustrations and her crap, because I think you have to do that. You can't just focus positive, because we're humans. We gotta get out the crap. And then the whole rest of the day, she'd have her prayer in her pocket, she'd take it out and she'd read it and she'd get frustrated and she'd be like, I'm so grateful for this man treating me so good. I'm so grateful for this guy being everything I wanted physically. I'm so grateful that he treats my kids good. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Blah, 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 blah. Grateful. And I had her not just say it, but feel what it would feel like in a year when she was with him, right? So she tuned into that every day. So as she did that, she started shifting up. So her level of people she had right then 
started shifting up to this person. And then she found this guy who she's now married to that was never married before. Is actually what she wanted. He loved her kids because he always wanted kids. He, they had great chemistry physically. They talked like emotionally about deep things, which she never had before. Like everything she wanted was <laughs> in her prayer was exactly who this guy was because she tuned herself into this higher frequency. So for me, it's finding out where you are, what's going on, wh what you want in a relationship, um, giving yourself permission to dump out the crap, the frustration, the stress, the whatever it is. Like you give yourself permission to feel negative because that's okay. And then also focus, the majority of your energy wants to be focused on where you're going, the gratitude, what that feeling is. Reside in that feeling of what would this feel like in a year, and you're going to tune yourself right into it just like a homie beacon. Excellent. Next question, what are your, which are your top three favorite books? We've spoken a lot about books tonight. Ooh, books. Um, okay, top one is one's called Zero Limits by Joe Vitale. Um, it's about Ho'oponopono. I love that book. Uh, there's another one called The Game of Life by Florence Shin. It's an old 60s book about kind of like a energy stuff. And then last one's Healing Codes by Dr. Alex Lloyd, which is kind of like a beginning energy healing concept, but is an amazing thing about the medical side of energy healing and how you can get into it and how you can help kind of start healing yourself in a totally healthy way. Excellent. Um, last question, Jonathan. What are your top three favorite songs? Oh my gosh, top three favorite songs. Okay, so my kind of eclectic. So the first one is obviously Shine by Collective Soul. That's number one. Um, two is Ramble On by Led Zeppelin, and probably because that's the first song my dad showed me when I was a kid. And three is probably Fanfare for the Common Man. It's an old trumpet classical song. Um, or it's um, Allegro by Vivaldi, very, very pretty string piece. Um, it's something that just kind of puts me into this place of, uh, oh, and then one more, I'm gonna add one more. It's the last of Mohicans theme. I love that song. <laughs> Amazing song, so yeah. Excellent, so we're about to, to end our conversation. Any piece of advice you would like to give our audience at Mindalia TV tonight? Well, first off, I did okay so far. I wanna make sure we're checking in. Oh, okay. absolutely, we're okay. really good, thank you. Um, if someone wants to, um, if you go to either one of my websites, I have written a, um, a meditation that is both music and my voice taking through someone a 10 minute meditation. If they want to, they can totally come on board. I'm happy to give that to them because it's just helpful. Um, as far as advice is concerned, um, I think I'm just gonna leave it with permission. What are you not giving yourself permission to do? And what do you wish you had permission to do? Whether that's run a business, whether it's date someone you thought is out of your league, whether that's forgetting someone you've held on to a grudge forever, what permission are you looking for? And then give yourself that permission because you don't need anybody to give you permission to do what you want to do. It's up to you. And I, if I may, I'm going to be the voice saying you have permission to move on, to become successful, to be awesome, and to do what you're waiting, waiting to do. There's no reason why you should wait. If you're looking to do something, Go do it. I am now your voice of permission telling you to go do it. You have permission to do so. Awesome. Awesome. Jonathan, thank you. Thank you very much. What an amazing conversation. Uh, well, thank you. No, really. I mean, we've, we've had fun. I, I've really enjoyed it, every single second of it. Oh, you're thank so you for, nice. <laughs> thank you for being who you are. It's, it's been fun. You know, it's been fun. It's been inspiring. It's been motivating. We loved all the stories you've shared. So thank you very much for, for being with us really thank you well thank you you guys like my my soul is I'm, I'm being filled and i appreciate you giving me the chance to just kind of blab for a second so thank you for that but just your just your energy alone and the rest of your team has been awesome so thank you for having me absolutely thank you and thank you very much and to mindalia tv's audience uh, this is a, again angel reba and thank you very much for being with us tonight and see you soon have a good evening bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.